The Nazis were famous for their development and design of innovative weapons, including their revolutionary miracle weapons. Although some of the Nazis' weapon designs were undoubtedly far-fetched and impractical such as the Panzer 1000, a monster tank weighing 1,000 tons, others were highly sophisticated and way ahead of their time and the competition. Here are five secret Nazi weapons that were either manufactured as prototypes or actually saw action in World War II. By the late summer of 1943, the Germans had developed and deployed two types of guided bombs, both of which used the same radio control system. The first was the rocket-boosted Henschel HS-293 bomb, intended for use against smaller unarmored ships. The second went by several designators, but was commonly known by both the Germans and the Allies as the Fritz X. The Fritz X was a penetration weapon designed for use against armored ships. Generally carried by the new Dornier Du 217K2 twin-engine bomber, the Fritz X weighed over 3,000 pounds and had a 710-pound warhead. It could be dropped from an altitude just above 18,000 feet at up to 3 miles from the target, had aerodynamic enhancements for it to achieve speeds up to 767 miles per hour, and could penetrate over 5 inches of armor plate. The operator had to keep both the target and the bomb in sight for the entire flight, and the bomb had flares for day and lights for the night in the fins to aid the operator in tracking and guiding the bomb. A key weakness was that the bomber had to remain straight and level for the duration of the bomb's flight, so the best defense was fighter aircraft, although the Allies quickly learned that making smoke worked very well too. The Germans first used the guided weapons in strikes on ports in Sicily in July 1943, after the Allies occupied the island, initially without much success, although for a time the Allies remained ignorant that the weapons were being guided. However, by the time of the Salerno landings in September, Allied intelligence was aware the weapons existed, and Allied scientists were working feverishly to develop radio jammers to disrupt the guidance system. The jammers, however, were not ready in time for the Salerno landings, although they were deployed by the end of September 1943. Initially, the jammers did not work because they were not jamming the correct frequency, although this was quickly corrected. The Germans quickly took steps to defeat the jammers, and the Allies countered, setting in motion the seesaw battle between electronic countermeasures ECM, and electronic counter-countermeasures ECCM, that continues to this day. The first real success of the Fritz X occurred on 9 September 1943, the same day as the Salerno landings, against the Italian Navy. After the overthrow and arrest of Italian dictator Benito Mussolini two months earlier, the Italian government had entered into secret negotiations with the Allies to switch sides. One of the most remarkable of the wonder weapons produced by Nazi Germany during World War II, the Messerschmitt Me 163 Comet, holds the distinction of being the first and only tailless rocket-powered interceptor to see operational service. Like the other advanced weapons fielded by Germany during the final year of World War II, the Me 163 had little actual effect on the outcome of the war. Considering the conditions under which it was developed and deployed, however, the Mi-163 can be rightly considered a significant technological accomplishment. The concept for the Comet originated during the late 1930s, when rocket propulsion for aircraft became increasingly attractive to a number of air planners in Nazi Germany. Although rockets potentially offered astounding performance advantages for an interceptor, their high fuel consumption posed seemingly insurmountable design difficulties. The unit made its first interception of Allied bombers on August 16, 1944 without success. Early combat experiences demonstrated a number of problems that prevented the Mi-163 from ever becoming an effective weapon. Although the aircraft's two Mk-108 30mm cannons were capable of downing a four-engine bomber with only three or four hits, the Comet's high speed, coupled with the cannon's slow rate of fire and short range, made effective gunnery nearly impossible against the slow-moving bombers. As a result, Mi-163 pilots recorded a total of only nine kills. Although capable of reaching its service ceiling of 12,100 meters in just under three and a half minutes, the Mi-163 carried only enough fuel for eight minutes of powered flight. After one or two firing passes, the pilot had to glide back to base with no means of escaping Allied escort fighters.
In late 1940, inspired by a French miniature tracked vehicle prototype a tree covered from the Seine, the Wehrmacht Ordnance Bureau ordered Bremen-based automaker Karl F. W. Borward to develop a similar vehicle, capable of delivering at least 100 pounds of high explosive to a target by remote control. In spring 1942, Borward rolled out its SDKFZ. 302, nicknamed Goliath, powered by two 2.5 kilowatt Bosch electric motors. Its limited range less than a mile on flat surfaces and high cost eventually led to its discontinuance. In late 1942 Borgward introduced the SDKFZ. 303A, powered by a Zundup two-cylinder gasoline engine with improved street range of more than seven miles. Two years later it produced the slightly larger 303B, which could carry a 220-pound payload. Borgward built more than 7,500 Goliaths during the war. The Allies called it the Beetle Tank. Operators used a joystick control box connected to the vehicle by a 2,145-foot triple-strand control cable two strands for steering, one for detonation. Issued to combat engineers and special armored units, the Goliath was designed to disable enemy tanks, disrupt infantry units or demolish strongpoints. Its control cable proved vulnerable to cutting, most notably when the Germans deployed it against the Polish Home Army during the 1944 Warsaw Uprising. Though the Goliath saw little use, it did serve as the precursor of the modern radio-controlled robotic vehicles. In 1943, when Nazi Field Marshal Hermann Göring demanded that the Luftwaffe's next bomber aircraft be able to carry a 1,000-kilogram bomb load 1,000 kilometers into enemy territory at a speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour, the Harton brothers presented him with plans for a jet-powered, single-pilot flying wing. Their first prototype, an unpowered glider, had a successful test flight in 1944, and a second, jet-engine-powered prototype, took to the air the following year, establishing that a powered flying wing could be controlled in flight. In light of that feat, it's possible the third prototype, the Ho 229 V3, would have flown farther than any aircraft of its day. Harton had planned to arm the third prototype with cannons, but the war ended before this airplane was finished. The Horton Ho 229 V3 is the only extant example of the world's first all-wing jet aircraft. Built in Germany during World War II, the Horton Ho 229 promised spectacular performance. The German Air Force, Luftwaffe, Chief, Hermann Göring, allocated half a million Reichmarks to the brothers Reimer and Walter Horton to build and fly several prototypes. Numerous technical problems beset this unique design, and the only powered example crashed after several test flights. Despite this, the airplane remains one of the most unusual combat aircraft tested during World War II. The U.S. Army found the Ho 229 prototypes V3 through V6 at Friedrichrode, Germany, in April 1945. The V3, also referred to as Horton X V3, was approximately half finished and nearest to completion of the four airframes. Army personnel removed it three days later and shipped it from Germany to the U.S. The aircraft arrived at what is now the Paul E. Garber Preservation, Restoration, and Storage Facility in Suitland, Maryland, around 1950. As early as 1939, the first night vision devices were introduced by the German Army. The first devices were being developed by AEG starting in 1935. By the end of World War II, the German army had equipped approximately 50 Mark V Panther tanks, which saw combat on both the eastern and western fronts. The Vamper Man portable system for infantrymen was being used with STG-44 Sturmdeuer assault rifles. The ZG-1229 Vamper weighed about 3 kilograms and was fitted with lugs at the weapons production facility. The soldier carrying this was known as Night Hunter. As well as the sight and infrared spotlight, there was a wooden cased battery for the light, and a second battery fitted inside a gas mask container to power the image converter. This was all strapped to a Tragegistel 39. The searchlight consisted of a conventional tungsten light source shining through a filter permitting only infrared light. The sensor was not sensitive to body heat because it operated in the upper light spectrum, rather than in the lower heat spectrum. The Vamper gear was used for the first time in combat in February 1945. 310 units had been delivered to the Wehrmacht in the final stages of the war. Eastern Front veteran reports consist of snipers shooting at night with the aid of peculiar non-shining torches, coupled with enormous optical sights mounted on their rifles. 
The similar infrared gear was fitted both to MG-34 and MG-42 machine guns.